right, welcome everybody. This is episode four of the Phil Connor Society, uh, named after Bill Murray's character in Groundhog Day. Uh, for those who haven't seen the movie, uh, he is stuck repeating the same day over and over, uh, tries many different ways to escape it, finally comes to a place of acceptance. And in that place, he begins to learn new things. He realizes, well, I got this day and I can't get away from it, so I might as well uh, do something. Uh, and he starts to uh, evolve as a person and he, he learns uh, jazz piano, ice sculpting, languages, all kinds of things. So with that in mind, um, I started playing guitar at the age of 45, as my next guest knows. Uh, and yeah, so it was something that I took on, you know, fairly late in the game, so to speak. And I always wanted to do something like this and interview people who have this, this, done a similar thing and decided to, uh, to to try something new. And so uh, here we are, episode four. My guest today is Mr. Michael Osh. Welcome, Mike. Hello, Michael, how are you? There he is. Um, I have known Michael for many, many, many years, but uh, many of you uh, don't, I'm sure. So I'm gonna give you his bio, uh, which could be a massive volume because this man is quite interesting. So uh, I'm gonna go into it here. My guest, uh, he's 54 years old, as I coincidentally am as well. He resides in Waterford, Ontario. He is semi-retired uh, as a media and music producer, and Michael has produced music videos, uh, television shows, infomercials. Uh, he's recorded and produced music for singer-songwriters, as well as recording many poets in the Toronto po poetry scene. Uh, Michael is the past president of the, of the Photographic Historical Society of Canada, a volunteer archivist at the Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, he's a researcher and writer, a musician, as you can see behind him, and songwriter. Uh, and maybe most impressive folks, and I'm not making this up, Michael walked from his hometown of Toronto to Newfoundland and back, and then a couple of years later walked from Toronto to Vancouver. And no, I'm not making that up, he did it. Uh, so uh, he is he currently, uh, he's occupying his time as Captain Mike uh, on as a school bus driver, and he dubs his bus the Pirate Ship of Knowledge. Uh, and it's my very great pleasure to introduce Michael Osh. I want to say one more thing. I got this from Wikipedia. It's about Renaissance man, and that's what I think of Mike as. And a Renaissance man or woman or polymath is the other term used is used for a very clever person who is good at many different things. It comes from uh, the Renaissance period in Italy, uh, people such as da Vinci, um, uh, it goes on and on. There's so many, Archimedes, uh, Michelangelo, Galileo, uh, Goethe, you know, and I honestly think of Mike, Michael as, as a Renaissance man, uh, as you've heard. He's, uh, he's done all kinds of different things and has such a varied uh, life. So again, welcome, Michael. Welcome, Mike. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so, yeah. So let's talk about um, the, the the thing you've taken up recently. Uh, and, recently. and what? Yeah. What would that be? Um, you know what, Michael? If you see behind me, I have all these instruments, and I've been a music producer, and I've been doing. I did music videos and all that. I never was a trained musician. Now, not to say that I didn't study and I didn't take guitar lessons and music lessons. I studied, you know, chord theory and I studied um, uh, jazz chord theory, but I never learned to read music. It's something I never learned to do. Okay. Um, and a lot of the times I would just fake it, you know? Um, and I mean, I, could, I understood the theory behind it. I understood what made a major, what made a minor chord, what was a eleventh chord, what was a thirteenth chord, but if you put the words in front of me, I could never, I couldn't, I couldn't read music. Mm. That was my limitation, you know. And I had hung out with a lot of blues and jazz musicians. And, uh, you know, historically, they don't read; they read charts, is what they read, and they and they make it up. I'm going to play a G chord, and then I'm just going to arpeggiate the G chord, and then the D chord, and you know, it got me so far. But at the same time, it limited me in dealing with um, classically trained musicians. I didn't, you know, okay. or, or dealing with Renaissance musicians who are so schooled in like, here's the music, here's the paperwork, read it, let's let's do it. 
And, right. and that held me back in a lot of ways because I wasn't able to move into maybe the field I wanted to uh, okay. as, a, as a professional musician or as a studio musician. Right. Uh, so I became an engineer, which you don't have to be when you're an engineer. I, you know, the only time I read is I would go in and I would lay down string parts for my, mm -hmm. for my, for my, for my string players that would come in and record. And I would do it on computer and then have it printed out for them. So okay. that's the way I got around not having to read or write music. And, it, and it's, it's, it's like someone who goes and travels to Spain and learns to speak Spanish, but never learns to read and write Spanish. And that's kind of how I was with music. Okay. You know? and, and I can say, uh, folks out there that, yeah, Michael is an amazing musician. Uh, you know, he's a humble guy. So he, but he, he's incredible. As you can see again behind him, he plays numerous instruments plays them very well. Um, so certainly, like he said, uh, he knows music, he knows how to play it um, and writes songs and etc. So the question is, why now? Why do you think now at this time in your life did you decide to do this? You know what? I, I was limited by um, wanting to share my music with other people. And, and you know, I could, I could get away with string parts and then mimic them on the computer but if I was doing an intricate guitar part, mm -hmm. how can I do that on a guitar? And then, you know, I don't, it doesn't translate to a computer. I don't have a MIDI guitar where I could just automatically have the chords change over. So I had to learn um, to do that. I'm also thinking of going back to university is one of the mm -hmm. other things. As a semi-retired person, I never went to university. I went to college, um, but I never had the chance really to go to university when I was younger. Right. And going back to university is one of those things I was wanting to do. And, I, and I'm, I'm looking potentially, I haven't made that decision yet, is mm -hmm. going into musical therapy, either that or psychotherapy. And okay. if I'm going to be a musical therapist, I have to be able to read music. That's one of the you know, criteria of being a musical therapist. So, so uh, part of this was... Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I applied uh, a few months ago to go back to university. Woo! And I picked yeah. a bunch of uh, courses and one of them was music therapy. And I looked at it and the prerequisite for it was, um, was grade eight theory or, or level three theory, Royal Conservatory, which for me, that's like, ah! you know? Yeah. And uh, so I actually went and got down to Long McQuay's and I got the conservatory book, level three. And I started reading through it and I was just like, I don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the way that, um, that conservatory music is taught. You know, I learned blues. Yeah, we're going to do a heavy six, five turnaround on that, which means that we're going to go to the minor six and come back to the fifth on the turnaround in the 12 bar. Okay. You know? Yeah. And I understand that. And I understand, you know, we're going to do one, four, five, and then we'll jump to the, you know, all kind of jazz talking. That's not the way they do it in conservatory. They're like, right. well, we're going to do with the dominant and then we'll do the subdominant. We'll find a tritone. And I'm like, what in the hell are they talking about? Now, how did so, you feel? How did you feel? I mean, I think you've already expressed it in a, in a way a, a bit panicky when you saw the level that they were looking for. Like, did you, did part of you think maybe this is beyond me? Did you have a moment of uh, hesitation? Fear, fear, definitely fear, fear yeah. of the unknown, fear of, Fear of failing, I think, was it. Um, right. You know, because I thought I was a fairly well-schooled musician mm -hmm. um, until you stack me against the guys who went to school for four years in university and, right. the, and the orchestral you know, guys who, who are doing this at the conservatory level. It's a different type of way of expressing music. And it doesn't diminish, you know, from the blues musicians or the jazz musicians or even the singer-songwriters or the rap artists who are doing their beats. Mm -hmm. It is still all music, and the thing about it is, how do they quantify it? And right. that's where the conservatory has a very old way of quantifying it that goes back, you know, into the into the to the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. and that has been put together. And back then, they didn't have CD players, they didn't have, you know, they didn't have Spotify. You couldn't just say, "Well, what does it sound like? Let me listen to it." Right. So back then. The only way that music was passed down was it for it to be written. And that's a very old tradition from the conservatory. Mm -hmm. Is it necessary today for a musician to learn to read? Not necessary. 
but it is valuable. Okay. So you were, you were fearful. Um, and again, everyone, this is someone who decided to walk alone across the country and back. So uh, he definitely has faced fears in many different ways. Um, and so you pushed through that. And how does it feel, Michael, to be a student again, to be a beginner? At it feels good. I'm taking private lessons to get my theory uh, up to that point where I will be able to sight read. And that's what I really want to do is be mm. able to, you know, someone hand me a chart and a sheet and say, okay, here, this is your part. you got to play it. And being able to look at it and go, oh, okay, there's, 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 you know, there's, there's two sharps. Okay. That's the key of D, you right. know, and know this, know this in, 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 instinctively. Um, mm. Okay. You know, we're, here are the flats, here are the sharps in this key. What key am I playing in? Um, I have no problem playing in the key. I've done that for years, you know? Mm -hmm. What key is it? And was the favorite thing I used to say all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, it's in this key. And I just, I, I, you know, as guitar players, you understand this, Mike, right. you get in that right. box, yeah. that box, and, it, and, and, it, and it, you can just play that box of the key. And you're like, okay, great. You, you learn how to go up and down the neck in that key. Yeah. And then all you do is you move your root. And you right. can go up and down and, you're, and you know, this is your, you know, this is your first, your second, your third, your fourth. Right. That's not how conservatory musicians learn it. Okay. You know, they learn it that, oh, what is this note I'm reading? Okay, where, how do I translate it to whether it's a woodwind instrument or a string instrument or, or, or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, that it fires different synoptic uh, things in your brain when you read music as opposed to, um, as to just uh, jam or freeform music. Right. And, and, and neither is right or wrong. I'm just saying it does fire your brain differently. Yeah. And the, and the conservatory people who fire, who, who read that, the neurons that go across their brain are firing a bit heavier than the people who are just using their right brain, their mm. creative side of their brain to say, oh, I'm just going to play this. I'm just going to do this and not really try to uh, take this message that's written on the page. Right. They, they just find this inner inspiration, which is, which is beautiful as well. Yeah. But I, and I've done that for, all, for my whole life is I played what was inside of me. Yeah. I want to be better than just me. Yeah. And, and speaking of which, uh, other musicians, do you have any favorite musicians in your life? Musicians that you. I have so many favorite musicians. I mean, Michael, it's, it's, it, it, I think every musician in some way can touch me, you know, uh, you know, as much as being a guitar player, my real instrument I love is slide, lap steel slide guitar. Mm -hmm. There's guys like Robert Randolph, Ben Harper. Um, right. I've been heavily influenced by a guy I did an album with last year uh, as part of the Indo-Canadian slide project. This guy named, guy, gentleman named Ratam Sakar from Calcutta, India. Yeah. I had, I had the opportunity over, uh, two month periods in, in consecutive years to sit and learn from this guy. And he studied traditional classic raga music under his guru and his guru's guru, who was Ravi Shankar. Okay. And, and, and I sat down with him and everything I knew about slide playing, he didn't know. Mm. He knew a totally different set of rules. Mm. And and the way he thinks about music, Indian rag music, I, I don't even know. They they talk about e shi ra ma, like the, instead of do re mi fa so la ti do, they have their own quantification for music. Wow. Okay. And, uh, and and it's amazing that opened my eyes to hold on. How do we look at music and how do we interpret music? Mm. And you know, I think one of the most incredible experiences I had with music um, goes back to my walk across Canada. You talked about that and. In Northern Ontario, one day, I was in uh, Lake uh, uh, Lake Superior Provincial Park, and I was on a trail away from the road for a bit of the day. And I sat down on a log, and all of a sudden, this this bird, this little chickadee, sat I don't know three, four feet away from me, and started chirping at me. It was the spring, so they you know, they like to sing. And I had a little ocarina that I carried around with me, and I came out, and and we sat there, and with this bird. I played call and response with this bird for about 10 minutes. 
That's amazing. And, you know, that opened my eyes to the fact that music is a language. Well, is it true? Is yeah, and, and, you know, in fairness, I know you, right? But just listening to you now, it, it sort of reinforces the understanding, you know, that honestly, you're a guy that's that's a searcher, right? You're, you're in a, you, yeah. I know you're, you're taking on this new thing, but it was funny having you on as a guest because I thought this is a guy that his whole life he's been trying new things, right? It's who you are, it seems, right? Like you, you're always, what I'm trying to say is you, you're always trying to, to learn more and more, it seems, especially with music. I'm looking for the answers to the questions I don't even know yet, you know, and that's, that's who I hope I remain to be the day until the day I die. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you mentioned earlier that I'm a school bus driver and, and I love that because I see these kids and they have such energy and every day on the bus with them, you know what I do? It drives them crazy, but I do it every day as they're getting ready to go get off the bus. I say to them here, I got to go get smarter. -er. <laughs> go get smarter. -er. And they look at me and they go smarter is not a word, Mr. Bus driver. <laughs> nice. And you know what? At the end of the day, I said, did you get smarter? -er? And they came back and said, yeah, I got smarter. -er. Yeah. And, you know, it's that, it's that inspiration we get from, from youth. Yeah. Because yeah. they haven't been knocked down yet, because they mm -hmm. haven't been trampled on and they haven't been, they haven't been put into their box yet. No. You're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a hockey player, you're this, you're that. And that's, that's. This is, this is where the, if I can jump in, this is where the show, this is totally in sync with what the show is, is that I started guitar at 45. At 25, I was saying to people, oh, geez, I wish I'd learned guitar. As like, though I'm six that. feet, you know, at 30. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so cool to play guitar. And then I realized, and this sounds funny, but this is actually what I said to myself one day. I said, you're not dead. You still have, you're alive. You have two hands. You've, and, and actually, quite frankly, there are people with one hand that learn it, you know. Um, but it, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm relating it to what you're saying about children because, you know, that's the thing is I'm having adults on this show. People that have, like you said, they're, this is who I am, right? You know, there's so many people out there who, you know, I'm this. And the notion of learning a guitar or learning another language or learning to paint, it would be laughable to a lot of people because that's not in their definition of who they are. Whereas a child goes, oh, okay, let me try to paint. Sure. I'll, oh, guitar? Why not? Well, They're open. They're endless. Right? You know, Michael, we only have one life. We only have one kick at this can. And, and I want to, there's a lot of people who say, do one thing and do it well. I'm mm -hmm. not dissing that, that idea, you know, and, and if that's, if, if you want to be successful at the top of your genre, mm -hmm. that's the best way to do it. Sure. But that's not yeah. who I am. You know what? I want to, I want to write a book. I want to record a CD. I want to walk across the country. I want to learn to write music. I want to go back to university. I, yeah. and, and, and I want to check off the list so that when I'm dead, I don't have anything left that I have to check off. Yeah. Now the university, let's talk about that. Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, you, you're excited. You're, you know, I'm excited. I'm concerned. I also have to deal with the, with the financial reality of going back to university at my age. Right. It's going to be a very expensive thing. It's going to be a full time four year, five year commitment. Mm hmm. And, and I, I'm evaluating that, you know, is it, is it something I want to do? I'm also considering going back part-time. Mm -hmm. And if I do that, I cannot do the music therapy, but that doesn't stop me from wanting to learn to read music. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and tell, uh, tell us about, tell us about your teacher. How, how do you get, you know, how, how are those classes going? They're going well. We, we meet once a week. Um, and, uh, right now we're going over, uh, uh, kind of extensive uh, polyrhythms and understanding polyrhythms. I have no problem reading music going up and down. Like I can, I know where the notes are on the scale. Right. It's like I know the letter Z is the letter Z, right? Yeah. Um, but when you put all them together, what does this actually say? Does, is it, okay. you know, and, and I'm learning, you know, I can read, you know, whole notes, half notes and, and quarter notes maybe even eighth notes, but when you start getting very complicated and it starts looking like uh, a dog's breakfast, right? you know, 
and, and understanding and interpreting that. That's what I'm really working at. So right to now. your teacher, you're, you're kind of a unique student then because you're somebody who has years of experience as opposed to someone who just comes into it completely new to music. Yeah, I, I kind of was very specific on 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 suggesting to to her what it was I was looking at, and you know she doesn't play guitar; she's a vocalist, okay. and and that's her area of expertise. is a vocal is a is a is a vocalist. She's an opera singer, um, but she has that conservatory background. She understands right. the way she understands that language and the way they speak and talk, which I didn't. Mm. And you know, I mean. Uh, it's funny because at the same time I'm 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 teaching her some things. Okay. And I think yeah. that's an amazing experience. Um, is to be able uh, to not only be the student but to be the teacher and and mm -hmm. and that's the way I look at it as well. You know, I know a lot, but once I think I know everything, I'm defeated. I, I I'm I'm incapable totally. of teaching. Yeah. And when we teach, we learn, right? Like I I taught acting years ago, and I would say something to a student. And then when the student left, I'd go to myself, I, I didn't know I knew that. <laughs> I guess I just wowed him, but I have no idea where that came from. Like, it, and, and you know, you're just learning as you teach, right? You know, it's, it's a fascinating thing. Um, and, and so do you have any musicians that you've jammed with or friends of yours who have always read music? Anyone that, do you know anyone like that? I have a few friends like that. Um... Actually, a friend in town here. He's a he's a bass player. He's 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 he comes from that school of reading and writing and, and conservatory trained. Right. And and when I sit down with him, it's he enjoys sitting down with me because we play more than than three chord songs. You know, we're right. like, oh, let's let's sit down and we'll put out chord charts and we'll be we'll play stuff that's that's interesting. Cool. And I was talking to him actually earlier today and I was telling him about the fact that I'm learning to read and, and, and he's like, oh, great. We can start working on very specific numbers. Like, I mean, you look at some of the, you know, Miles Davis and, and when he put those charts together mm. for these guys, they were very specific notes that these guys were supposed to play. So it's going to open up a whole new world for you, right? I hope the... so. I really hope it does. Excellent. Now, I I would like to speak to you for about 10 hours if I could, but I can't. So we've just got a few minutes left, Michael. Do you, would you like to play something for us to send us out here? This is a song I'm learning right now here. It's called, well, it's, it's, it's an old one called Autumn Leaves. Okay. And I've been, I'm actually getting this prepared for my audition for oh free university. And, okay. Uh, let me just back up a second. Hold on. We get this readjusted here. I have I have the guitar part already pre-recorded. I'm going to play the slide part on top of it. Oh, beautiful. This is Nancy. I name all my guitars. Wow. She's lovely. Okay. Uh, can you hear that? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. The saddest song ever written. <laughs> Thank you. 
There you go, Michael. Autumn leaves. That was absolutely beautiful and very sad. It is a sad song. It is. That was gorgeous. Well, thank you so much, Michael, for coming on. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Yeah, and when this crazy pandemic's over, we will definitely see each other. Um, we close the show by singing, I got you, babe. I got you, babe. Yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> Groundhog Day. All right, buddy. You take care. Thanks for coming on. Peace and love, my friend. Peace back. See ya.